Well, we, we got to go over. It's a little embarrassing, but it's something we do need to go over. We're talking about watch anxieties, which as far as I can tell, these are all first world problems, but they are obsession problems. They are watch obsessive problems. This is a video essay, so we're not in my new HD camera, Canon T5i, which I'm still uh, learning to play with. This is the stock uh, iMac uh, camera, which is just more used for video essays. You know, my wife took the kids to uh, do a few errands. I could come back in the middle of this. I don't have time to uh, set up the tripod and everything. And I shouldn't even be talking about that. I need to get right into the, uh, the anxieties. Uh, these are some anxieties. I know I have them personally. I think other watch obsessives have them. And, and uh, what, what I mean by anxiety, these, these are concerns you have about watches specifically that take you out of your comfort zone and they inhibit you from perhaps getting the watches that you really want. For example, uh, there's a Seiko MM300, I believe it's the SBDX001. It's a 44 millimeter watch. Uh, apparently, the, the build quality is amazing. Uh, Johnny Casual told me he's read that it's been compared to the Omega. And you can buy them used for about 15, and you can buy them under 17 new on eBay currently. And uh, one of the anxieties that such a watch ha uh, can give to someone is the, uh, the service. You, from what I've read, um, and I did email uh, Seiko USA in New Jersey, they said you have to. Uh, send it to New Jersey, then they send it to Japan. I also read a guy said he got it back from Japan and had some hairline scratches. That could be a rare occurrence. Who knows? Uh, I did uh, email International Watch Works. They say they can service it, and which is good to hear. I mean, it's got a mono block case. It's just this unbelievable, uh, what can I refer it to? It's like this this, it looks like an indestructible case, and I guess accessing it to do a service uh, can be gnarly. And uh, they did tell me they can service it. However, they don't have parts for it, so I wonder how that would play. Would they? Would my watch like be in their shop for six months while they then, you know, order parts directly from Japan? How would that play out? I guess I'd have to have some more elaborate email exchanges to get those details out there. But that is good to know. I mean, International Watch Works uh, and Motor City Watch Works, I believe, uh, they get uh, good reviews on your watch forums and such. And uh, I haven't uh, emailed uh, Internet uh, Motor City Watch Works yet about that inquiry. And I assume that even if they can do it, uh, they too cannot. Uh, they too cannot access the parts readily. So uh, this is a, a type of anxiety, uh, you know, do you want to watch where you have to have it in transit? When it's in transit, you got so many hands touching it, and who, who's accountable you know, that many hands touching your watch? Uh, number two, here, here's another uh, concern of mine. You know, I like Breitling a lot. Uh, they use a lot of polished material on the bracelet and whatnot, and... Uh, Polished material gives me a certain anxiety. Yeah, it looks nice and blingy, and, and it can be tasteful. But, um, you know, the problem with polish, you scratch it, and you're done. Uh, drinking green tea, uh, losing weight, lost five pounds, quit eating pesto. Uh, it's fantastic. I'm hungry all the time. Took Snake Roberts' advice. I'm in a constant state of semi-hunger. Number three, forgive me. You know, I don't like tritium. You know, tritium, is, of course, is the radiation uh, tubes that uh, give uh, diver watches the, the best light you can imagine. I don't like it. I don't know why I don't like it. Maybe it doesn't last long enough. 20 years isn't long enough for me. It's got to be 100 years. And maybe, even then, I, to me, a watch has to be timeless. And the idea of it just dying out, you know, the light of the watch is dying out after X amount of years, doesn't play with, well with me. And uh, it's, it's somewhat... No, it's completely irrational, the position I'm having, but I'm just being honest with you. I need to be honest in this uh, video uh, blog essay. Uh, so that would be a, an issue that I... Oh, here's another anxiety. I, I have an aversion to gold. I can't wear a watch with any gold on it. Uh, I have a, my aversion to, to gold of any kind, particularly on a watch, is equivalent to my wife and daughter's aversion to spiders. I mean, when there's a spider in the house... Like, everything has to stop, and, and I have to go kill the spider. 
And, and it's fantastic because it makes me feel relevant as a suburban man uh, trying to uh, maintain his tea in the suburbs. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to, to kill the spider. I guess it's like the caveman killing Tyrannosaurus Rex back in the day. Though Tyrannosaurus Rex did not exist during caveman age, you understand the analogy. Number five, don't like kinetic movements. Can't stand those needy, greedy pigs where they just, you just got to feed those beasts. Uh... It, or the lithium battery dies out. I have one, and uh, what a, what an insane journey that's been. It's my third. No, come on. I've had about six of them, maybe seven, but I've had three alone. Of the uh, Seiko SUN019. It's in my box right now. It's fully charged because I do power walks with it. Speaking of power walks, I did the power walks. This is insane. I said to myself, "You got a kinetic watch. This is your opportunity." to do power walks, and then of course I, I wanted to upgrade it so I had dumbbells and I, I tweaked my rotator cuff. I blame that damn kinetic. And the only good news is it's getting better. My left shoulder is healing. It, it wasn't a major tweak. I would compare it to like a major league pitcher who uh, throws a complete game and he just has to ice his, his shoulder and he, he's inflamed for a couple of days. That appears, and I, I don't want to jinx that, that appears to be the case. It seemed, I did a workout today and man, I felt like I was 95%. So hopefully I just tweak it. I, I'm still doing the power walks, but without the dumbbells. And man, am I, I love that SUN019. I've done some videos on it. You know I like it. Am I going to sell it? Huh? Come on. Is it too much for you? Uh, number six. I would not want to wear, uh, I'm not against Rolex per se, and, and if I were going to have a Rolex, it would have to be something off the gr off the grid, you know, something that, you know, your non-watch guys don't know anything about. But I, I wouldn't want to wear a watch that's too ubiquitous or too popular so much so that non-watch people buy it because, you know, it's a, it's a status symbol. I would definitely have anxieties about having a watch like that. Uh, and... Uh, so that would not be in play. Uh, another anxiety, you know, when you look at close-up images of watches online, they look amazing. You can see the detail, and, and the thing is, they play bigger when you see close-ups, and you get an anxiety when you when you order that watch, and you really don't know what, what the characteristics of that watch are until you take it out of the box and you put it on your wrist. And a lot of times that experience gets lost in the translation from the close-up that you saw on the internet. Man, close-ups can really just, uh, what word could we use? They can really expand, inflate, you know, the, the, and magnify the, uh, the grandeur of a watch. And then, you, you know, you open it up at home and, well, you got flop sweat. It's not what you thought it was. And that would be my seventh uh, source of anxiety. Look at these first world problems that the watch obsessive has to suffer from. Unbelievable. Here's another watch anxiety. I don't like going on vacation with just one watch. Because what if, well, supposing it's a quartz battery and it dies. Supposing it's a automatic and it acts up. you got to have a backup. The idea of like going to bed in a strange hotel, and God knows I do a lot of travel, uh, and not having a backup watch, that, that would give me a lot of anxieties. Uh, number 10. Uh, you're wearing your grail. You saved up for your grail. You've channeled all your energies onto your grail, and you wear it, and uh, no one says anything about it. You're invisible, and and you're going, guys. This look, look at this, look at me, huh? And people, what? What do you want me to do? You want me to spit nickels? What? What are you, Paul McCartney? Are you, what, are you singing my love? You're doing nothing. You're wearing a watch. No one cares about the watch but you. You need to go back to your room, rethink the whole thing. Maybe you can reinvent the wheel. I don't know. No one cares about your watch. Man, to receive a scolding like that, a scolding, an admonishment, just because I was a little vain, do I really need to be beaten up that much? We've got 10 here. Should we do a bonus? Should we do a bonus one? I don't know why. I'm just feeling, uh, I'm feeling, what's the word? I'm feeling magnanimous. So let's do a bonus anxiety uh, before my uh, family comes home. I'm feeling very magnanimous all of a sudden. Here's an anxiety. You've got um, a particular type of diver watch with a black bezel and big blue markers. And your grail is a watch of the same style. And your anxiety is, is called watch redundance. 
Do I have too many watches that have share too many styling cues? Oh my gosh, my, my collection has become redundant. Uh, that's kind of funny, uh, another first world problem. I know Johnny Casual has done a good job on his channel of helping people get well-balanced collections. Uh, so you've got good distribution of this type of watch, this type of watch, this type of watch. And um, I, I appreciate that. You, you, the thing is, I have a very obsessive personality, and I tend to be drawn to the same type of style of watch. And, and you know, I, I, and I get obsessed with foods. And I remember as a kid, I, or not a kid, as a 20-something-year-old, I, uh, you know, if I, I would eat pesto pasta, you know, for every meal for like three weeks until I got sick of it and then I would go to something else. I kind of see that same personality with watches. So as an example, I have an Orient Saturation Diver. And I have the Seiko Kinetic Tuna, and they have um, black bezels, and they're nice, big, bold um, divers. And, you know, the two watches I want right now are the same style, the Seiko Sumo and the Seiko MM300 SBDX001. So now I would have four watches with similar styling cues. Granted, the, the uh, Kinetic is, is somewhat... Uh, off the reservation with some of its uh, Battlestar Galactic uh, cues, but uh, nevertheless, uh, there's there's some uh, watch anxieties uh, for you. First world problems. Uh, should be in a good mood today. Uh, lost five pounds since going off the pesto on the salads, and now I have a new anxiety. I'm gonna have to go uh, add, uh, subtract links from my uh, from my uh, bracelets. Uh, no, more more management, more watch management. Full time job, man. Until next time, I am out.